What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. Today I'm going to show you guys how to replace the rotors and your brakes on your car. Now this is going to be the same process regardless of what kind of car you have. Let's get straight into it. Let's do this. So one of the main indicators that you need to replace your rotors is the feedback that you get from your steering wheel. Now when you're driving along, if you tend to find that your steering wheel is nice and stable, there's no vibration or anything, but then when you apply the brakes, it tends to sit there and shake in your hands and you can feel that vibration through the steering wheel and also through the brake pedal. That's a good indicator that your rotors need to be replaced. Now if we have a look at the rotors here, we can see that there's some visible signs of damage. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the brake pad. To do that, we need to work on this caliper right here. Now this caliper comes in two sections. We've got the mounting section here, or the mount, and then we've got the actual caliper that holds in the brake pads. So what we want to do is there's a nut up on the top. We just want to take off the one on top first and then this is going to open up like a clamshell and we can remove the pads. So if we have a look on top here, you can see that's the nut up, up on top. Uh, sorry, the bolt that needs to be loosened up. So we'll just undo this one here. Once that's loose, we can undo that by hand. Now that we've got that out of the way, we can simply pry this back and we can see that that starts to now give us access to the brake pads. So one thing you need to be very careful with is the brake lines. Now in this case here we've got this brake line mounted onto a mounting bracket on this side. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take off this bolt over here so that we can get a bit more slack. Now with your one, um, depending on the car that you've got, you might already have enough slack. In this case here we're just going to loosen this up. Once that's off, the brake line will then come undone and we've got that slack now that we need. So now that we've got this caliper out of the way, you can see there's one brake pad on either side of the rotors. What we're going to do is just simply remove those out. If you find they're a little bit tight, you might be able to use a screwdriver just to pry them out. And that simply comes out like this. Now this one here, you can see that there's still a fair bit of brake um, left in this pad here. Um, but what I found was on the other side, one side had been eaten away, um, it was uh, grinding away unevenly, so the other side was completely worn out, while this side still had some brake pad left on there. So once again, we'll remove the other side. And this one here is actually not too bad. So on the right side of the car is where most of the damage has been, but on this side here, we're going to replace both sides either way. So now that we've got the brake pads out of the way, what we're going to do is we're going to close this back up, hand tighten this, just so that it holds back in place. And what we're gonna do now is remove the whole caliper, including the mounting bracket. The way we do that, there's two bolts on the back here. It's gonna be a little bit hard to show you guys. So we've got one right here, this top bolt here, and there's another one on the bottom. So these two bolts here are what hold the whole mounting um, for the caliper. And what we're gonna do is release that. Now that might be a little bit tight. You might need to use a breaker bar or a hammer um, just to simply tight, um, loosen that up. Once our top one's loose, we'll do the same thing on the bottom. Now we've got the bottom bolt out, we'll put that on the side. So now that we've got the bottom one off, we're going to support the bottom of the caliper and loosen this top one here off. And once that's out, then you can remove the whole caliper all in one piece, and then we can just place that anywhere nice and secure. So in this case here, I can sit this one here up here and that's not going to go anywhere. So now that we've got our caliper completely removed, we want to take off uh, the rotors. They're also known as discs, um, depending on what country you live in. So whether it's a rotor or a disc, very easy. Sometimes they might be a little bit tight and you might need to hit it with a little bit of a hammer just to loosen this up. Um, but this one here should come straight off. And we'll just move that on the side. So now we've got our new rotor ready to go. Um, you'll find on the majority of rotors, particularly the older style, um, there'll be a protective film on here. What you need to do is get rid of that protective film before actually installing the rotor. So the way you do that is by using some brake cleaner or even some uh, degreaser just to get rid of that um, oily substance that's on top. This one here doesn't have it. It's got a black coating on there that um, doesn't require that protective film on there. So I don't have to worry about that step. So all we do now is just simply install that back in place push it in nice and tight and then we're going to get started on the brake calipers. So once again get your brake caliper back into position and we're going to get that bolt ready. So we're just going to reline this back up with the bolt, put that on hand tight and then we'll put the bottom bolt in as well. So we'll just use our ratchet once again and we'll tighten these two up. So make sure you do these bolts up nice and tight. top and bottom 
So now that we've got our rotor installed, that is the complete process for the rotor itself. Now we're going to move back onto the uh, brakes. So we're going to loosen that top bolt from the top that we put on by hand. Open up that clamshell and we're ready to reinstall uh, the new brakes. Before you do that, what we need to do is we need to reset this piston here. So if you have a look down here, we can see that the piston is actually protruding a bit and that's because it was set at the old thickness of the old brakes. Now obviously the new brakes are a lot thicker, so that means this piston here needs to be retracted. Before you actually get started on this, we need to open up the relief valve or the cap for the brake fluid. So in the engine bay you'll find the cap for your brake fluid. Now what you want to do is just leave that nice and loose, we'll leave the cap up on top and that'll reduce the amount of pressure in the brake line. So to reset this piston, you can get specialty tools to reset this, but what we're going to use is a G-clamp. It'll do the exact same process and we're going to use one of the old brake pads. So first thing we need to do is just sit one of these brake pads back into here and then we're going to put the G-clamp in position and we're going to simply compress uh, that brake pad against the piston. When doing this you want to make sure that you go nice and slow, you don't want to crack any of these seals so just wind that back easily and as we tighten up on, on that G-clamp you can see the piston going back in. So nice and easy all the way through and once that's done, then we can then take off the pressure, remove that G-clamp and also the old brake pad. So now that's flush, ready for the new brakes to be inserted. So we've got the new brake pads ready to be installed. These ones here are the Bendix brand. So what we're going to do to install these, we're going to use the little notches on the top and the bottom and slide them into the slots. So there's no way that you can get this wrong. Slide in one side first and then the top side simply follows through. Once that's done, press it in nice and tight, and then we're going to repeat the process on the back using the back pad. So once you've got your two new brake pads installed, then you simply lift up the uh, clamshell section of the caliper. That should line up, we can get this out of the way, and now we can put that bolt straight back into place. So once again, tighten that bolt up. Once that's done, the only thing left to do now is reinstall this brake line that we took off initially and tighten that one back up. So now that we've got our new rotor and brake pads installed, the only thing left to do now is reinstall the wheel. Close the lid back up for your brake fluid. And then when you start the car, you wanna make sure that you pump the brakes until it becomes hard again. Nice and slow. Once we've got that line full again, we're ready to go. So there you have it guys, that's how to replace the rotors and your brakes on a car. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. As always, like, comment and subscribe. Until next time I'm Bill, thanks for watching Bill's Out 2.